Newton, Newton's law of motion. So Isaac Newton actually has three laws for us. And one of them just makes, I know you know at least one of them, but the first one, Newton's first law, it's just common sense. If you listen to it, we call Newton's first law. Which says, if you have an object, at rest, is not moving, remains at rest, as long as the net force acts on it is zero or as long as as no net force act on it here we go what does that mean if you take this calculator here that calculator will stay here as long as there is no force pushing or net force pushing or pulling on it but now let me start pushing on this just a little bit not a lot of force there's a net force on that but it's not moving I'm pushing on it but it's not a lot if you want to see me pushing I can take a ruler and push with the ruler you can see actually or this one if I push enough you're gonna see bend here we go it's bending so I'm pushing on it well why is it moving because the net force is zero why is the net force I'm pushing in that direction and the friction in the opposite direction they canceling each other out so there is no net force once the net force is more than zero the object will move so an object that's at rest will remain remains at rest as long as what the net force acts on it is zero or another way of looking at it an object that's moving an object moving with constant velocity continues to move with the same velocity and in the same direction as long as no net force acts on it mean again if you get this one moving this will continue to move in the same direction at the same speed if there is no other forces acting or no net force acting on it now usually if you push a calculator it's going to stop why well this one says it should continue to move you're not pushing anymore what's the force acting on it there's something making it slow down because according to newton's here it says an object that's moving with constant velocity continues to move with the same velocity and in the same direction well, why is this slowing down? Because the friction between the calculator and the table, we'll get to the friction that's coming up in this chapter. Friction is always pointing in the opposite direction to the direction you're moving. So if you're moving this way, the friction is pointing backwards, slowing you down. That's why when you take your gas off the pedal, your car driving 65, you take your gas off the pedal, you'll notice it goes from 65 
to 55, to 50, to 45, 40, 30, because the friction between the road and the tire will slow you down. On ice there, when you take your foot off the gas pedal, the car still slows down because there's still friction, but not as much. We don't have pure frictionless. There's not much we have here on this universe that's frictionless. We can come close to it. We can make the coefficient of friction really, really small. So you'll see in the lab, we might take a, like a nice smooth beam, put holes in it. And what the holes actually do when you put something over it, it's not really sitting over that beam. It's not making any contacts, floating. And that's the close, like a billiard. Anyone plays pool here? A pool table, that's almost frictional. We say frictionless, but it's not. That's the closest thing to us. We get ice, pool table, we say that's almost frictionless, you know. But if there is no net force on it, that object will continue to move, move in the same direction and the same speed. That's why sometimes you're watching a show on TV and they go, well, some people took a picture of this spaceship, something, they noticed something in the sky, and something was moving like this and suddenly changes direction. Well, nothing should change direction if it's just like a star. If something was moving this direction and suddenly changing went that direction, it's not just um, a star or something moving. Something made it change direction. Could be outer space, could be a spaceship with an engine on it. Now they just crank the speed and go in that direction. But it will not just go that way. If you let it go, we'll just go in a circle the whole time. We'll keep going. So that's what Newton's first law. If you have an object that's sitting there, it will stay sitting, it's not gonna move as long as the net force is zero. Or if something is moving, will continue to move in the same direction, same speed, as long as there is no net force acting on it. What's Newton's second law then? Let's look at that. As I said, Newton has three laws. His second law is actually very well known. Everyone says that all the time or mention it some people, even people not physics major. You see people say F equals MA. That's Newton's second law. Another way of saying it, surely the net force, not F, the net F net, the net force equals mass times acceleration. We'll talk about the net force shortly. A lot of times also we write that the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. If we neglect friction and we take a box that has a one kilogram mass, what this one is saying is the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force you apply. Directly proportional. When you say directly proportional, it means if you increase one, the other one increases. If I apply a force, a force is a push or a pull. If I apply a force to that of 10 Newton, we use Newton because of Isaac Newton here, given credit for forces, so the unit for force is always a Newton. If I put a 10 Newton, this object is gonna move in this direction, what's the acceleration of that equal to? Well, there's only one force acting on that if I'm neglecting friction, and it says the force, which is 10, equals the mass, which is one times the acceleration. So the acceleration will be 10 meters per second squared. Now the same object, if I apply a force of 20 Newton, what's the acceleration? So again, F equals MA, or the sum of the forces, the only one here. So we have 20 equals the mass, which is one times the acceleration, and that's unknown. So my acceleration here is 20 meters per second squared.
I'm neglecting something here. I'll come back and talk about it in a second. Because when you put a one kilogram on a table, that one kilogram is pushing down on the table. And when we get to Newton's third law, you'll see for every action, there is what? An equal and opposite reaction. That's really Newton's third law. So if that weight is pushing down on the table, the table is pushing back on that weight. So we'll get to that soon. But right now, I only have one force acting on that. That's this one. Now, let's talk about that net force. Let's say you're moving furniture at home, and you got a couch or a sofa you try, or a box, heavy box. You can't really pick it up. This has a mass of 100 kilogram. That's 220 pounds. That's heavy. And you want to push it across the, the floor there. You don't want to pick it up. You don't want to hurt your back. So you push on it in this direction. Let's say this angle here is 20 degrees. You push on it with the force of 100 Newton. Which way the box is going to move? It's going to move in this direction. Sitting on the ground. Here's the ground. Let's say frictionless. So the ground is not slowing you down. You're pushing on the frictionless ground there and the box sliding to the right. When, what Newton said is the net force or F net. So you gotta look and see what is the net force that's making you move in that direction. It's not the 100 Newton. How much of that force in the X direction? How much of it? So what portion of this force is in this direction? That's what we need to figure that out. And that value is 100 cosine 20 degrees. That's the amount of force in the X direction. So my net force here is 100 cosine 20 degrees is equal to the mass, which is 100 times the acceleration. So 100 cosine 20, the net force is 90, almost 94 Newton equals 100 times A. So the acceleration is 0.94 meters per second squared. By the way, one Newton, in case you're curious about what's a Newton, it's one kilogram times meter per second squared. That's what, what a Newton is. It's one kilogram moving at an acceleration of one meter per second squared. Now let's continue with the net forces. We have a box, again, it's five kilogram here. We have a force in this direction of 50 Newton. We get a force in this direction of 30 Newton. And we get a force in this direction of 60 Newton. And the question, is it going to move? And if yes, what is the acceleration? Is it going to move? That's the first question. If yes, find the acceleration. What is the acceleration? How do we know if it's going to move or not? Is there a net force acting on that? What do we have pushing to the right? How much? 
all together. 80 newtons. What do we have pushing to the left? 60. Yep, so we have a net force 20 more in that direction. So F net equals mass times acceleration. The net force is the 80 minus the 60. 80 to the right, 60 to the left. You've got to subtract them. Is equal to the mass, which is 5 times the acceleration. Since the bigger force pointing to the right, it will move to the right. So the object will move in that direction. What's 80 minus 60? 20 equals 5A. A equals 4 meters per second, well, kilogram meter per second squared, or new, or actually that's correct. This is, we're looking for the acceleration. Meter per second squared. Now let me write Newton's third law, then we'll do a free body diagram. Because the problem is going to get more complicated than this. But let's talk about that. Newton's third law. And some of, us, some of us know that as for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Or, another way of saying it, if object one exerts a force F, that's an X here, on object two, then object two exerts a force, but instead of F, negative F. Negative means opposite direction on object one. this is a wall and I push on the wall here of a force of 50 Newton that's me pushing on that wall pushing in that direction 50 Newton what is the wall doing to me if I'm pushing on the wall of 50 Newton the wall is pushing back on me of how much of a force 50 Newton For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I push on the wall 50 Newton, the wall is pushing back on me 50 Newton. The same wall, now if I push on the wall of a smaller force, 10 Newton, what is the wall doing back to me? 10 Newton. Now weight is a force. Weight.
and weight is equal to mass times gravity. So if we take somebody who's 50 kilogram and say, what's the weight of that person? The weight of the person is 50 times 9.8, which is 490 Newton. So if we take a 50 kilogram, that's about 110 pound person. So that person standing in an elevator, for example, you're waiting for the elevator to go up. Because you're standing in that elevator, you're pushing down on the elevator, your weight is pushing down of how much? 490 Newton. What do you think the elevator floor is doing to you? Pushing back up of what value? 490 Newton. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, you want to lose weight quickly? We'll show you a way today without working out or eating less. Within seconds, you can lose a few pounds. We can put you in the elevator and weigh you on the way up right before the elevator stops. You want to do the same thing? Get in the elevator on the fourth floor, push down. The minute start to go down, notice the floor under you is dropping almost. So you're going to weigh less. But here's the bad news. If you weigh yourself before it stops, you're going to weigh more. Because the elevator actually on the way down, start, as the acceleration starts to pick up speed, then it goes at constant speed for a while, then slows down. Once it slows down, you're going to weigh more. On the way up, it's going to push up. You weigh more. Constant speed, when you get to the top, slows down, and you're going to weigh less. So the reason I'm talking about this, because when you put a box, like in the previous example, we had a box on the table, and I said, oh, that's the force on it, you're pushing. But it's something called free body diagram. What a free body diagram is you list all the forces acting on an object. Remember in the first example, we had a box like this, one kilogram. And we said we're pushing on it with a force of 10 Newton. And that's the only force I put there. The truth, that's not the only force acting on that. We have two other forces acting on it. One of them is what? The weight of this box. This box is not just dangling in the air. If it was dangling in the air, nothing attached to it, you're right, there's no, you know, you can't put the weight in the normal force. But if it's sitting on a desk, if it's sitting on the floor, you get the weight of that, which is mass times gravity. And you get a force for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That force is known as the normal force. The normal force must be equal to this one. The normal force always perpendicular to the surface. The object is moving. So here you're moving on this direction, the normal straight 90 degrees. Now what happens if you go to move that box there earlier, we talked about it. You have a box, I forgot, what was it, 100 kilogram? Heavy box. And you push on it with the force. What was the force that you pushed on? I forgot for that example. Where is that picture? 100. This is 120 Newton. We'll change it so you don't think it's always 100. And this is 20 degrees. And if you want to do the free body diagram for that, Let's list all the forces. So I'll take the center of the box. This is the center of the box. I said, I get the, so this is my box. That dot is my box. 
what do we have? We have the weight of the box, which is down, and the weight is equal to what? It's mass times gravity. The mass here is 100. Gravity is what? 9.8. And that's 980 Newton. Now, if I wasn't pushing on the box, if the box was sitting on the floor, nobody's touching the box, then we have a force pushing upward and how big that force? 980, but not in this example because of that force. How is that going to affect that force? We'll call it the normal force, N. What else we have? We have you pushing down of 120 at angle 20 degrees. So your force is pushing in this direction. So this is 120 the value of it, you're pushing in that direction at an angle 20 degrees or negative 20 because that's below the axes. If we take this force and break it down to components, that force there, that's you pushing and you will see why that force, the normal is not 980 now. If you break it down this is what you're going to see. There's the box again. This is the weight. The weight doesn't change. It has nothing to do with the body. All depends on the mass and gravity. You got the normal up there. And now we got this force. Can I break that into X and Y component? Notice to go from here to there, you have to go to the right and down. So you must have a component in this direction and must have a component to that in that direction. So if you break it down to X and Y component, that's what you're gonna have. The X component is gonna be 120 cosine negative 20 degrees and the y value 120 sine negative 20 degrees the negative is going to tell me it's coming down what's 120 cosine 20 degrees 113 in this direction in the y direction 120 sine negative 20 which is 41 it's negative but the negative to tell me it's down I know it's coming down I already draw an arrow coming down so it's 41 Newton down now let's go back to that box here that box was sitting on the floor you pushing it along the floor was the box going up and down was it bouncing from the floor to the ceiling, back to the floor to the ceiling, back and forth? The reason it wasn't going up and down because if you take all the forces in the y direction, the net force has to be zero. Because if there is a net force, it will move up and down. Newton's second law. So the net force in the y direction has to be zero. And that means if you add all the forces pointing upward, they have to add up to all the forces pointing down. What are all the forces pointing upward? What do we have? The only one I see is the normal force. What are the forces pointing down? I got the 980, and what else? Plus the 41. So that's equal to what? 1,021 Newton. So that normal force pushing up, or the floor pushing up on that table is actually, in this case, 1020. If you think about it, 
If I go and sit on this desk, if I sit on it, the floor is going to push more now because it has, it has to hold the table, it has to hold me. So the floor is pushing up by a larger weight now, a larger force than if I was off the table. If I'm off the table, they only have to support, support this table. So whatever the weight of that desk there, that's what the floor is pushing up with. But once I sit on that desk, then the floor has to push my weight and the weight of the table up there. Now, if I lift this one up, the floor, if I stop pulling up of 20 Newton up, the, the floor doesn't have to push that much because I'm already helping the floor. I'm adding 20 Newton to that. And if it's going to move, this one's going to move to the right. And the net force in the x direction should equal mass times acceleration. And in this example, I'm using the 120, so the net force is 113 in that direction. Equals 100 times the acceleration, so the acceleration will be to the right of 1.13 meter per second squared. Now, let's look at this story here. I want you to see it. If you look at our calculators here, most of them, notice this calculator, it's really easy to move on the table. So to make sure it doesn't slide off your desk there, those are expensive, they're not cheap. We put these little rubber stoppers, see the rubber pieces on? The that's for more friction. Rubber is actually, now it's not moving. Same thing this one. They have these rubber pieces. Sometimes when you have an old calculator, they fall off. But they had four rubber pieces. There's still one on it. The other three are missing. If I put these calculators side by side and I push on them, assume there's no friction, they're going to move. So let's see what's happening there. I have a box. That's, a, that's the story there. I have a box of 5 kilogram. Right next to it, there's a smaller box of 3 kilogram. And I push on this box. Let me give you a force here of 15 Newton. Let's see what's happening there. These two are going to move in that direction because there's no friction. So the net force here equals mass times acceleration. Well, I got 15 Newton here. And since this one is making both of these books move, the mass combined together is how many kilograms? Eight. One point eight seven five meter per second squared. Now, here's the question. I know I'm pushing from here on this book, that's why it's moving. Why is that book moving? The three kilogram. Why is it moving? Yep, exactly. That 5 kilogram box is pushing on that, we're called F1. And what do you think the 3 kilogram is doing to F1? 
is pushing back on it with the same value of force. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Can we get what that force is? What is F1? Well, the mass is 3 kilogram. So what is F1 equal to? I'm pushing from here 15 Newton, but this box pushing on that with a different force. Well, this box is making the 3 kilogram move. So the net force on the 3 kilogram is mass times acceleration. The only force acting on the 3 kilogram, the only force pushing on it is box 1 of F1. We know what the mass of that 3, we know what the acceleration, which is 1.875. So there's a net force of 5.625 Newton acting on the third box. You're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute then, let's go back to the first problem. When you did the net forces 15, why didn't you include this one in it and that one in it? Why did you write 15, not 15 plus F1 minus that one? Notice if you try to write them that way, based on what we said, the net force to the right is we have the 15 plus what? F1 pointing to the right minus what is pointing backward? F1. What's going to happen to F1 minus F1? They cancel each other out. So that's why they weren't really a factor in the first equation, because we know these two are equal and opposite in direction. They will cancel each other out. So the only net result, the only net force left there is the pushing force I'm doing there with. And they can't move a different acceleration because this one is pushing that one. They're stuck together. So the acceleration has to be the same. So once I know what the acceleration of the whole block, I know the acceleration of each one of them is going to be the same number. So I can tell you what the force on each one will be. Now, if you reverse the books, notice if you take the same thing, but now reverse them, put the three kilogram here first, then put the five kilogram there, and still push with the force of 15 Newton. The first part is going to be exactly the same. The net force is 15, the mass is 8, the acceleration is A, 1.875. But now the 3 kilogram got a push, we'll call it F2 here, and this is pushing back of F2. The 3 kilogram has to push the 5 kilogram to make it move. So what is F2? F2 is making the 5 kilogram move 5 times the acceleration 1.875. And now F2 will be 9.375. Let's take a couple more examples, then we'll stop and head to the lab there. I have a question. Yes. Can you explain, um, I think I understand it, but can you explain why it switches, like the, the force on each box changes from three on the top, and then for the second example, it was five? Because this one, F2, is pushing that box, okay. and the mass of that box is the five kilogram. Okay. When you have them backward, 
So the, the box I'm pushing is going to push with this one. See, this force, this force is going to push that box. And, and what's the mass? Three, yep, three. the mass is 3 kilograms. But once you reverse that, you got to push that box and that mass between them. Notice so the mass between them is the same story, but the mass between them changes based on which one on the front, which one on the back. Mm -hmm. You know. If you think about it actually differently, um, if you take a heavy box and right behind it, you put like a, a Kit Kat bar. And you push in the box, that Kit Kat bar will move, right? Mm -hmm. But now if you reverse that, you put that Kit Kat bar in the front and you put the heavy box in the back, you push it on the Kit Kat bar, you're gonna crush it. Mm -hmm. Because that force is much larger now. Because you have to move a bigger weight, bigger mass. So that Kit Kat bar in the front, because I like Kit Kat, is gonna be all squished, you know? Crunch, probably flat as a pancake. But when it's in the front, you're gonna push the box, gonna push it, no damage, nothing. You can grab it still in one piece because the mass is small, you don't need that much force to move it. Let's take another example. You taking your niece, this is a sled here, winter time, we're already putting you in winter time. And there's your niece in the sled there. Your niece has a mass of 10 kilogram, 22 pounds, little one color years old. The sled has a mass of eight kilogram. Then you're pulling on that. You have a rope attached to that sled and you're pulling on it. This force is what? Let's say a force of 50 Newton at an angle of 37 degrees. I'll do the free body diagram first, draw the free body diagram, free body diagram, FBD. You'll see the physics book, they call it FBD, free body diagram. And calculate the acceleration. This is my free body well, my free body diagram. So this is the toboggan, I make it that dot, the sled there, and the baby. Now we have the weight of the sled and the weight of the baby. The weight of the baby, B for baby which is 10 times 9.8. And what do we have? 98 Newton. What else we have? The sled itself. So the weight of the sled pushing down as for a sled. And that's the mass, that's eight times the acceleration, which is 9.8. Seventy-eight point four. You know, third question. We'll make it calculate the normal force N, whether the ground is pushing up on you. We get the ground pushing up normal. Don't write the sum of these yet, because it's not. What else we have? We have you pulling in this direction. of a value of 50 Newton at an angle of what? 37 degrees. This is my free body diagram. These are all the forces acting on that sled there. I'm treating the sled and the baby as one object here. 
I could have just took it as 18 pound, 18 kilogram combined here and use 18 instead of eight and 10. Now, we're gonna take that force that's not, anything that's not on a 90 degree on the X or Y axis, I have to break it down to its components. So if I break that force into its components, this is what I have. I have the weight of the baby, which is 98. I have the weight of the sled, which is 78.4. I got the normal force, I don't know what that number yet. That's question number three. And now I'm gonna take that force, that 50, and break it down to two parts. An X portion and a Y portion. And what is the X portion, how much? It's gonna be in this direction. And what's the Y portion, it's gonna be which way? Upward. So I'm taking that force, I decided to put them like this to show you it's going to the right, going up so you get to see them. The one to the right is gonna be what? 50 cosine 37 degrees. Which is roughly 40. And the Y value is what? 50 sine 37 degrees. And that's 30. Or 30.1. Now I'm assuming if you're dragging your knees on the snow there, you're moving which way? You're not going up and down. You're not bouncing like this, like a suitcase. She's sliding on the ice, so she's moving in this direction. If you're moving along the x-axis, that means, guess what? In the y direction, the net force must be zero. I'll go on the next page here. So in the y direction, F net, has to be zero. What does that mean? The net force has to be zero. That means if you take all the forces pointing upward and you add them, this should equal all the forces pointing down. And what is pointing upward? What do we have? We have the normal force. We have the 30.1. And what do we have pointing down, bless you, 98, and we have the 78.4. N plus 30.1 equals, let's look at 98 plus 78.4. Can we get what the normal force is? You subtract 30.1 from both sides. The normal force has to be 146.3 Newton. This normal force becomes really important once we start talking about friction. Because the value of friction, how much friction we have there, depends on the value of N. The bigger N is, the more friction you have. In the x direction, obviously you're moving, right? So the net force, since you're moving, does not equal to zero here. Because you were moving. You were going to the right. Well, what is your net force? The only force I see in the x direction is what? 40 Newton which way? To the right. That's all I see. So 40 equals the mass times the acceleration. The mass, what was the mass of? Now remember, the mass is the combined mass. We get the sled and the baby in it, that's 18. Q 
Can we get the acceleration? 40 divided by 18, and the acceleration is 2.22. So we got the free body diagram. We did that right here. We calculated N and we calculated the acceleration. We answer all three questions. Now, earlier I made a statement about the elevator. So you want to lose weight, we'll put you on the elevator. We can make you lose weight or gain weight. It depends when we weigh you. What happens when you're in an elevator? Let's say the elevator is going up. So you have a mass. And we know what your mass is. Let's say 60 kilogram. So we got a person that's 60 kilogram. He's going to walk into an elevator and we're going to weigh you twice. I'll ask you three times. And see what's going to happen. The elevator is going to start from the ground here and it's going to go to level six. Well, what's going to happen when the elevator starts, assuming there's no stops in between, otherwise it will be the whole day there, it's going to have some acceleration there. We'll give you some number. Let's say it's 2 meters per second squared. For a short time, then from here to here is going to move a constant speed, which means the acceleration is zero. So the acceleration will start now moving. You'll feel it when it kicks in. Go, start to move up. Then nice and slow, constant speed the entire time. And from here to there, it's going to slow down to stop. So the acceleration will be negative. Let's say negative 2 meters per second squared. That's region 1. This is region 2. And that's region three. So you're standing on the scale. You want to weigh yourself. Let's say you decide to weigh yourself in region one. There's you. There's the scale of, and there's you. So your weight down. The weight of the person is down. Here we go. The weight is 60 times 9.8. 588. We have the scale pushing up, and that's really what the scale reads, is whatever that value is. So if the scale is actually not moving, I mean, if the elevator is not moving, perfect. We got it. That's your weight. Your weight is 588 Newton. But because the elevator is moving upward, it's moving in this direction, we're going to say F net equals mass times acceleration. Well, you're moving upward. So what's the net force? N minus the 588. What the scale is going to tell you your weight minus your actual weight, the 588, equals the mass times acceleration. What's your mass? 60 times the acceleration, which is 2. So guess what? You just gained about 120 Newton. You're not going to be happy.
Not about exactly 120. So you say, oh God, you weigh 708 Newton. Normally when you weigh yourself in the morning, it's 588 Newton. Now this one says 708. So if you're using pounds, imagine you somewhere says, oh, you weigh 120 pounds. You get in the elevator, so you weigh 140, 150. You're gonna have a stroke there. Like, I gained 40 pounds or 30 pounds just overnight? What did I eat last night? A cow? Now in region two here, the elevator is moving a constant acceleration, I mean constant speed. If it's constant speed, what's your acceleration? Zero, yes. So the same equation. The normal minus 588 equals 60 times zero. Normal minus 588 equals zero. And it says the scale said you weigh 588, and that's what you normally weigh. Because if you're not moving, it's 588. So when that section of the elevator, when it's moving at constant speed, your weight is accurate. It goes back to where it's supposed to be. Now in region three, when you slow down, you're gonna weigh really less. You like that. Because the net force, N minus 588, equals the mass, which is what? 60 times the acceleration. What's your acceleration? Negative two. Four sixty-eight. So you just lost one hundred and twenty newton. And if you do it on the way down, it's the same thing. Once the elevator starts, you're going to weigh less. The correct one on the way down. Then down here, you start to decrease because now you're going down. Your acceleration is negative; it's going backward. So actually it becomes the reverse of that, you end up with that number. Okay. We'll wait here, and next time we'll add um, other stuff to it. Well, let me just see one thing to see if that's the last piece. There's actually one more piece, let me just finish it. in this section, and that is if you're on a, a slant, like on a mountain skiing there. If you are actually, if you park, listen, this is street there, and you have a, a car that's standard, and you park your car right here, well, if you don't put that emergency brake, what's going to happen to your car? It's going to slide down. Why would it slide down? Nobody was pushing on it. Well, here's what's going to happen when you're on a slant. When you're on a slant, you get your weight down, straight down. And you get the normal force, as I said earlier, is always perpendicular to the surface of movement or motion. So the normal is in this direction. Those are the forces that you have. The weight always straight down, but the normal is always perpendicular to the surface. Right there. So the easiest thing to do right now is change your x axis and y axis. If this is, let's say 30 degrees, I use, I use theta instead of a number, theta. If I make this my y-axis right here, and this is my x-axis right there, If you know any geometry, I'll extend this a little bit more. 
if you know geometry, you know when you have a right triangle, some of the angles should be what? 180. So this angle here has to be theta. This is the weight here. So when you do your free body diagram, this is, I'm gonna turn the paper sideways to look normal, because I always like X in this direction, Y is up and down. So when you turn it like this, you can see the two forces. You got this force and you get that force. So what do you have acting on it, in the free body diagram? You have the normal force pointing upward, That's the normal. And you get the weight down. But notice the angle theta really will be with respect to the y-axis. Can you see that? The angle with respect to the y-axis, not with respect to x. If it was with respect to x, we know the x and y component. The x component is the weight cosine theta and the y value, the weight sine theta. X is always the cosine, y is always the sine, if you remember from vectors. That's because the angle was always measured with respect to the x-axis. Here, the angle with respect to what axis? The y-axis. So when you break it down to x and y components, it's gonna be backward. What do I mean by backward? This is the normal. Now notice this is down like this. That means it's going to have a component to the left and one down. So we'll have a component to the left. That's the X component. And a component down, that's the Y component. And again, this is backward to everything that we learn. The X component was always the cosine, but not here. The X component is going to be the weight times sine of theta. Not cosine, sine. And the y value is going to be the weight times cosine theta. And again, the reason we're switching, because theta is given to you with respect to the y axis, not the x axis. That's the reason. So from now on, when you see something on incline like this, the first thing I do I say, I want to find out what the acceleration of this car is. How fast is it moving? So let me take an example here with numbers. I parked on a hill there. I forgot my emergency brake. My car is 600 kilogram. Angle is 10 degree angle, not that steep. We don't want to kill anyone. Here's what's going to happen. This is my y axis, it's going to be straight up there. And this is my x axis. This is the normal force pushing up. I'm going to take the weight, instead of drawing the weight down here at 10 degree with respect to y, I'm going to break it down to x and y component. In this direction, I'm going to have the weight, which is mass, times gravity, times sine of 10 degrees. And this one, mass times gravity times cosine theta. So this one, the mass is 600. Gravity is 9.8 for this example. Sine 10 degrees. And that will make it what?
one zero two one in this direction in this direction the mass which is 600 gravity which is 9.8 cosine 10 degrees <coughs> And that's five seven nine one. Now again, think about that car. Is the car going up and down in the sky, flying up to the moon, coming back? No, it's just staying on that road. That means the net force in the y direction is zero. The net force is zero which means the normal that's pointing upward minus or equals 5791. All the forces pointing upward, they have to equal all the forces pointing down. Pointing upward, there's only N. Pointing down, there's only 5791. X direction. The car is going to move. It's going to move in this direction. It's going to slide down. So there is a net force. F net equals the mass times the acceleration. The net force is 1,021. That's this value. The mass is 600. The acceleration is A. 1,021 divided by 600. The acceleration is 1.70. A lot of people get stuck. Why is this sine and that's cosine? I always thought the x value is the cosine, the y value is sine. That's correct. As long as theta was measured with respect to the x axis. Once you flip that, once you make theta with respect to y, then you got to flip these values. This value is always mg sine theta. That's always mg cosine theta for incline. Next video or next class, we'll do a lot of these applications, you know, and you get to see more examples. But I'll stop here so we can go to the lab.